Good evening, everybody. It's weird to say that, isn't it? It's a little awkward to say evening. We're still so used to saying good morning. Uh, but welcome to our um, Good Friday service. Um, just want to give you a little bit of a heads up about how tonight's going to go, kind of the, the mood of it all. It's going to be a contemplative evening with some thoughtful uh, and worshipful engaging in seven particular words, seven words that summarize Jesus' um, experience on our behalf as he made his journey on his way to the cross. Um, he went through various feelings and, and acts such as betrayal, denial, uh, being alone, being under accusation through suffering and crucifixion and death. And those are our seven words that we're going to be highlighting as we walk through some of these passages tonight. Um, we'll have various readers share with us um, some of the scripture passages connected to those experiences. And then intermingled, we're going to sing some familiar songs and some new songs. If you don't know the new songs, that's okay. Just take that time to meditate and think about what is being sung, what is being said, and what's being, what the, uh, the connections that are being made there uh, that you can relate to. And if you feel comfortable at any point, you're welcome to join in just as well. Um, and near the end of it, we're going to have a time of communion. So I hope everybody had a chance to get some communion supplies on the way in. Um, just raise your hand if you, if you missed them on the way in, and we'll have somebody uh, grab some for you. Anybody? No? Everybody got them? Great. Uh, great, because we want to be able to take part of that together as the body of Christ celebrating what Jesus has done for us. Um, now, I want to invite you during this time to fully engage your imagination, to use your mind's eye to kind of enter into the story as if you are there. Feel some of the tragedy that brought this horrific event about. Um, yet also know that even though this is the worst act in all of history, the, the worst act that ever happened in all of history. It's still called Good Friday for the ones who understand what it means, for the ones who have trusted in what Jesus did for them. This is all good news. Even though it's a little bit sad and somber, it's good news for those of us who believe. And so with that, um, out of the most wicked evil comes the greatest good for us, and it brings a reason for rejoicing. So let's make a point to quiet our hearts and minds right now and enter into this time prayerfully. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening that we can tune out all other distractions and focus on you, on what you did on our behalf, the things that you suffered, the betrayal, the denial, being alone, being falsely accused, suffering and being crucified and dying for us. God, as we meditate on those things tonight, just impress them on our hearts. Challenge us with our response to what you have done. May we respond with gratitude. May we respond with joy. May we respond by trusting you all the more for who you are. But meet us here most of all, God. Let your presence be among us, speaking through us, through your word, and minister to us, even as we sing out to you. Again, Lord, we thank you for this time and for all that are able to be here, and we ask your blessing over it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew 26, 6 through 16. While Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, 
but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. If you are able, will you please stand and join us in singing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Deep the Father's love for 
They say a rooster crowing is God's wake-up call. Yeah, that's, uh, at least that's the way it was for me. Everything, that, that whole night was a blur, all right? Um, I didn't comprehend, none of us could comprehend everything that was going on, all right? We were all in the upper room, Jesus was washing our feet. Um, then we were in the garden, Jesus goes off to pray by himself. I fell asleep, I'm not proud of it. I had a big meal, bread makes me sleepy. Next thing we know, me, James, and John, Jesus is in our face, and he's trying to wake us up, and uh, he said, um, what is he said, uh, the, the, uh, the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, and, and then before we know it, Judas is kissing Jesus on the cheek, I try to go help him, I cut off this guard's ear, for the record, I wasn't aiming for his ear, I'm a fisherman, not a swordsman, and then they, uh, they arrest Jesus, and they take him off, and we... We ran. And it wasn't but two hours earlier that we were in the upper room. I was looking at him. I was looking him right in the eye saying, if everyone disowns you, Jesus, I won't. I'm with you. I love you. And I think that's what made me stop, turn around, go back. And uh, I caught a glimpse of Jesus as they were taking him to the high priest's house. Stood at the gate, and some girl comes up to me, starts pointing at me, starts going, you, you're with him. You're with this man that claims to be the son of God. You're one of his disciples. I felt like every eye was on me. So I just brushed her off. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. You got the wrong guy. I get my way into the courtyard, and uh, it's cold. I, I try to warm up by the fire. And then there's this guy that recognizes me, and he is uh, from the ear incident, you know, and starts going, get him, get him, he's with him. Just arrest him, get him. And I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, all right? I wasn't with him. It was easier the second time to deny him. some time right before morning and um, this wise guy he comes up to me and goes, who are you kidding, alright? Who are you fooling? You're with him. I can tell by your accent. I'm like, this is just the way I talk, alright? And, and the whole night they kept pushing him around. They kept beating him. They kept spitting on him, throwing insults at him and I couldn't take it anymore. I had enough. I was tired of people accusing me, looking at me and I, and I just I said a few things that I'm not proud of but I was like, leave him alone. You don't know what you're doing, alright? Just leave him alone. I wasn't with him. And that's when I heard the most blood-curdling sound I ever heard in my whole life. I heard that rooster crow. And at that moment, Jesus, he turns around and he looks at me. He looks at me. And his gaze, you can't escape his gaze. I mean, when his eyes are on you, you cannot escape it. And they arrested him and they took him off. I will die with you, Jesus. As everyone, if everybody disowns you, I will die with you. What a, what a joke. I mean, what would you do? At that moment, at that time, I ran. I ran so fast, I ran so long. And you know what they did? They killed him. He's dead. Psalm 31, 9 through 14. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. 
Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. Alone comes from Mark 14, verses 32 through 41. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a, little, going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners.
Accusation, Mark 14, 55 through 59. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days will build another, not made with hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do from them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Suffering. Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 5. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. 
Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. If you're able, please stand and join us in singing the wonderful cross.
You may be seated. Crucifixion. This is Matthew chapter 27, verses 31 through 43. After they had mocked him, they took, off the, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. As I mentioned earlier tonight, we're going to take communion together, and that time has come. I want to invite you to take out your elements and prepare them. Uh, remove the wafer from the bottom first, that's the easiest, and then carefully peel back the top so you can access the fruit of the vine. Can you imagine being gathered in that upper room on that evening with Jesus, a man you followed for three years, seeing him work miracles, hearing him teach with such stirring authority, watching him do things that no one else has ever done before, fulfilling prophecies left and right. And in that upper room, he's teaching you many different things. He's not only showing you what it means to serve as he washes the disciples' feet, kneeling down, clothing himself as a servant and gently cleansing away the dirt from their day's travels. He showed them that's what it means to follow me. That's what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom of God is to be a servant. And then he goes on to tell them about what's going to happen to him, that he's about to give his life for them. But they don't fully get it. Still, he tries to give them a better object lesson, something that they can take with them and remember time and time again whenever they do gather together for Passover or for any other meal together to remember through simple elements, simple symbols, what he did for them and what it does to them. How we are bonded to Christ through his blood poured out and his body broken. How we are forgiven of our sins, washed clean and free, our brokenness healed in his name because of what he did for us. They didn't quite get it then, but they got it eventually. Today, if you get this, I invite you to participate with us. If you've yet to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to abstain, but if you would trust him as your Lord and Savior and recognize him today as the one who died in your place and rose again, the one who is the rightful king and ruler of your life, then by all means, I invite you to participate. We're going to take in these elements together as I recite from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, and when he had given thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat it together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your body was broken for us. For our, all of our sinful brokenness, you suffered. 
you were bruised for our transgressions, you were pierced for our iniquities, and, and we thank you that, that the punishment was laid on you and not us. Thank you for being broken for us, Lord Jesus. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that though your blood was poured out, it was for our benefit to wash us clean so that our conscience would no longer be accusing, but we'd be able to stand free and confident before our holy God, knowing that we've been forgiven completely. We thank you so much that all of this means that those who trust in you can also have life forever with you. And so we receive that now and we look forward to the day when you do return. Until then, Lord, find us faithful. In response, let's uh, stand and sing nothing but the blood together. Luke 23, 44 to 46. It was now about noon, 
and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Band and sing this last song together. And I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Sing this out. Jesus paid it all. That tells us a lot. That tells us that we don't have to keep trying to pay it ourselves, trying to be good enough, 
work hard enough, go to enough church, pay enough dues, be nice enough. We cannot possibly. But Jesus paid it all on that tree. And we know that this is not the end of the story, right? We know that what happened on that cross isn't a period that ends a sentence. It's only the beginning. It only is the beginning, especially for all who would believe. If you would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the one who gave his life for you, who's the very Son of God, dying in your place, paying the price that your sins deserve, and rising again, as we'll celebrate on Easter Sunday, if you believe that in your heart, then guess what happens for you in that moment when you put your full trust in him? Your eternity begins. Your eternal life begins. It can start now, even, and last forever. It doesn't matter whether you've betrayed him in the past with the things that you've said and done with your sin, the way you may have denied him and turned your back on him, walked away from him, the way you may have even accused God and leveled accusations against him in your anger and frustration. It doesn't matter. He is still here for you. He can meet you in your pain and your suffering. He's completely familiar with all of that. And because of what he has done for you, if you will trust him, you no longer have to fear that awful thing of death as if it is the final period on your life. It can turn into an exclamation point of joy. It can turn into something far greater for you. His death has brought you forgiveness of sins and has brought you life and life eternal do you believe that? If you have yet to receive that truth and that forgiveness, I want to encourage you to do that tonight even. Take that first step and just say, Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I fall short of your glory. There's no amount of good things that I can do to cover my sins, but you came and you paid the price for my sins. And I trust that your sacrifice counts for me. Because not only did you die for me, but you rose again. And because you rose, I will one day rise too. If you pray that now and you trust in him, that's the first step in a longer journey of continuing to trust him every day of your life. And may you, may you strengthen them, Lord Jesus, those who have trusted you in this moment and those who have been trusting you for a long time. May you also strengthen them with a greater resolve and understanding of what you've done for them. May you impress it upon their hearts day by day as they remind themselves of the truth of the gospel, of what you've done. May they live and rejoice in this truth, even though it is a somber truth that we've celebrated tonight. It is a horrific truth in many ways, but it is the one that brings us a reconciled relationship with you, God, and so we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the honor and all the glory forevermore in the holy, precious, and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you guys for coming and also invite you to come on out for Easter. Don't forget, let's, <laughs> this is not the end of the story. We get to really celebrate and be joy-filled on Sunday, celebrating that He is alive. Amen. He is alive forevermore. Uh, so thank you for coming tonight. Um, May you stand and just receive this brief benediction and we'll send you on your way. May you go in the grace and peace provided by our crucified and risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and have a good evening.